I can almost guarantee you've seen some sort of photo animation on social media in the last few weeks. Things like this. These portrait animations are one of the hottest things on Instagram, Facebook and other social media at this point in time, but I guess not too many of you know how easy it is to create them. In this video I'll show you how it's done and we're gonna take this photo and create something like this. It looks pretty cool, but what's even better is that by the end of the video you will be able to replicate this technique on any portrait photo and create whatever you want. All of that and more coming up. Hey, what's up guys? Tom here from Integnity bringing you the best tips and tools to make your video look better and helping you to create stronger visual impact on your audience. On this channel we do a lot of tutorials and talk a lot about tools such as After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop. So if you are new to the channel and want to learn some cool things with video, consider subscribing. Subscribe. Oh, wait, button is. One more thing before we begin animating. Don't forget to check out the show notes and links in the description below where I'll put all the relevant information and tools we'll be using in this video. So portrait animations, they've been around for quite a while, I admit, but up to very recently there was such a pain to create and that's why most people don't even try to make them. So thanks to new tools, it's no longer a question if you should or shouldn't be using them on your social media because they are more engaging than your static pictures, they attract more followers and social media algorithms are actually pushing them higher because they are considered to be a video rather than a static picture. All right, enough talking, let's do some work. Okay, so we're gonna need two things. First one is Adobe After Effects and the second one is Photomotion. Photomotion is a toolkit for Adobe After Effects, so you need After Effects installed on your computer first. I'll put both links in the description section, so make sure you, know, you pause the video, go get them. Okay, so you might be wondering what is Photomotion? Well, Photomotion is a set of tools for After Effects that will help you animate your images. And we just recently released a new update. The new Photomotion is 10 times more powerful, 10 times quicker, uh, we have uh, five different projections now, we can animate different things. So if you just open this folder, this is how Photomotion looks when you download it and unzip it. Uh, we're going to be focusing on portrait animation today, but we also have cinemagraph animations, uh, you know, Horizon, which is more for advanced users that need all these advanced tools for photo animation. Then we have Mirage. Mirage is really easy to set up. It's super fast to render. Parallax. Parallax is ideal for people who are just starting in photo animation because it's basically just a typical parallax effect. We're not going to go into small details of photo motion portrait because there's just way too much you can do with this toolkit, but we're going to stick with the very basic stuff, at least you will see how it works and you could replicate something like that in your workflow. So what we're gonna do is open Photomotion Portrait, double click on this AEP file that will open After Effects. As you can see, there is no installation involved or anything like that, and that's for a very good reason that I'll show you later on. But for now, you don't need to care about anything else, it's just double click on that AP file that will load Photomotion directly into your After Effects, including user interface, including functions, including projection types, and everything is loaded directly into After Effects as you work on it. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is just make sure you are in Selection Tool over there, single click on it, and then just double click on Start Portrait that will open a new composition. This is called Composition. And as you can see, all these compositions are still down here. Okay, so we are in Main Dashboard's composition now. All we need to do is double click on Add Photo button. That will open a new composition. As you can see, all of them are still here. So, you know, you can close it anytime you want. You reopen it by double clicking on that button again. So we need to import our image into After Effects. And we do that either by double clicking on this area here, or we just go File, Import, File. And we're gonna go to desktop and I have this image here, which is from Unsplash. I'll put the link down below into the description. Hit open and now it is in After Effects, but we need to bring it into Photomotion and we do that by dragging it over here, just like that. As you can see, we need to scale this image down a little bit and you do that by single clicking on it and hitting S on your keyboard. That will bring up scale attribute, single click on it and now you can drag this whatever you want. You can also type if you want, let's say you know, 59%, but I think it's easier when you just drag it like this. 
Okay, I think something like this looks fine. Let's just move it a little bit down so we can see top of his head. We can now close this composition. Everything is saved. That image is now inside that main dashboard composition as well. And also a new button appeared here under required steps. And you might be wondering why you can't click on these buttons yet. And that's for a good reason, because Photomotion is smart enough to kind of, you know, prevent you from destroying your own work. And that basically means you need to finish all the required steps first. And after that, Photomotion will allow you to do whatever you want. Okay, before we go, to finish off this animation by completing the second step, I just want to quickly show you what happened over on this side of the screen. What you can do with these buttons is to get an instant preview how your animation is going to look on different devices. So for example, we want to preview how this animation is going to look on Instagram as a square. We have that here. So single click on this and now we need to activate this button somehow. Every single time that you see some grey button in Photomotion, that means you should only single click on it. If you see blue buttons like down here, that means you should double click on it and that will open a new composition. So back here, single click on this button and now you might be wondering where you turn these things on. You need to go to window and over down to effect controls. You only need to do this once, you don't need to do it every single time that you click on it and a new panel will appear. It will probably be over here if you just open it up. So it's going to be like this next to your project tab. You can then dock it wherever you want to. I just prefer to have it down here. And in this tab, you can see we have some checkboxes. And the first one is activate. So just make sure we are on that square and hit activate. So this is a square, for example. We can go choose portrait. It's going to look like this or vertical, which is ideal for Instagram and Instagram stories, TV, whatever you name it. This is the resolution for you. So this is how it's going to look like on your phone, for example. We're going to stick with, let's say, portrait for now. It does not affect anything, so don't worry. It's not destructive if you start working on this resolution and then you change your mind. I'll show you a great way how you can export multiple of these resolutions at the same time. But now back to these required steps. So you can see we need to finish off the second one. Set up faces. Just double click on it. So this blue thing that you see, that is called Photomotion X-Ray. What X-Ray allows you to do is to place it over your face like this and then single click on face setup. Again, we are in effect controls window. And as you can see, we have different settings that we should set up. So for example, we need to specify where our left eye is. Click on this and just single click on where his left eye is. Do the same thing for the right eye like that. Do the same thing for the nose and look what's going to happen. What happened is that Photomotion calculated 3D mesh of your face based on eyes position and nose position. It also provided us with this orange controller. So what this orange controller allows you to do is to move it from side to side, left, right, depends on where your face is looking, while still locking those eyes position and nose position as well. So for this image, we're going to stick with something like this. Obviously, this is 99% perfect, I would say. But you can also grab this and just have a look if, you know, there are any imperfections or anything like that. If you see any, you can always go to tweak. Just double click on tweak. And here you can do things like, you know, you can go here, click on that layer. There is an effect called liquify. You just single click on this hand icon. And for example, you know, we need to move his ears a little bit. So you just click and drag like that. You can always go here and make your brush a little bit bigger. So you capture more of that area. Okay, so when we are ready, we can close this composition, which will bring us back to setup faces. I'm not going to go into details about what this button is doing, but just keep in mind that, for example, if you have hair obstructing your face or you have sunglasses or glasses, just now you can add all of these objects down here. We don't need it for this animation, so we can just go back to our main dashboard by closing this one and just give it a second and let's see what's going to happen. We are still in the same composition, but Photomotion is smart enough to give you full power of Photomotion when you need it and hide everything else when you don't need it. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is animate that face. So just drag this timeline head to something like one second, for example, over there. And we're just going to grab our universal controller and move it over here, for example. Oops. And boom, our animation is done. You don't need to do anything else if you don't want to. 
I'm gonna show you what else is there as well. Just wait for it. But your animation is done. The face is moving. You can preview that animation and export it. You are ready to go. I'm gonna show you a couple of other things here. Like, for example, you can also zoom in by single clicking on this button here, which stays within your controller and zooming in on that face a little bit. So, for example, something like this, a little bit more. And now, as you can see, it will go from that default position that we have here over to this position, just like that. Well, ideally, what you should do now is preview your animation if you are happy with it, and you're going to do it by hitting the spacebar. But before you do, just make sure you drop down your resolution down to half or even third, depends on your computer power. I'm just going to drop it to half like this, and then I'm just going to move this to first frame, and then I'm going to hit spacebar. There you have it. If you hit spacebar now, you can scrap this and you'll see how that animation looks like. It looks pretty good. If you are happy with this, you can export it by double clicking on this export button. But I have something special for you because we haven't even touched on this section over here. Let's focus on this section over here, which is called particles. Single click on this button over there. There is a button called activate particles. Click on it. Give it a second or two and boom, you have full 3D particle system in your animation. Already animated, you don't need to do anything else. You just hit that spacebar again to preview how it's going to look like. And as you can see, as I scrub the timeline, it just looks amazing. And just like that, by single clicking on that checkbox, you can add particles into your scene. We have about 30 of these particles to choose from. So for example, if you go down here and type, I want particle number four, hit enter and boom. It's going to replace all of those particles with new particles. And again, they are connected, fully animated. It just looks amazing. There are plenty of other things here. For example, you can specify how much they should move depending on your camera movement. You can do some basic color correction on them. Like, for example, brighten them up like this. Or you can just make them black and white with a single checkbox. Yeah, you see, pretty cool. And if you're looking for more advanced use of particles, you can always go into each of these buttons here and they give you controls for different types of things. For example, this button controls the particles that are closest to the camera, which are these over here. So what we can do with them, we can make them bigger if we want to. And it's not going to affect anything else but that first layer of those particles. We can even activate override master settings. Then we can switch particle type. So we can use this particle for this layer and just keep all these golden particles for every other layer here. So we can choose, for example, uh, I don't know, number five. I'm not sure what that is. As you can see, it's slightly different particle than this one. So you can have fun with this. And there's plenty of settings here. You can do blur offset. You can change the color of that individual particle layer and so on and so on. So that's the particular system here. It's so, so powerful because it's already there. You just click that one button and it will import that into your scene, into your 3D animation. It just looks amazing. One thing I forgot to mention is if you go into, for example, this middle ones, and we have a slider here for density. So if you find yourself wanting, you know, less particles on this layer, for example, all you need to do is just come to that layer there and just decrease density to something lower and it's going to put less particles into that layer. Okay, I'm just going to disable the particle system just for the time being because, you know, it's a little bit slower when you previewing your animation with these particles enabled. So I'm just going to disable them for now. In this area over there, you can do all sorts of things on your face animation. Single click on that and you can do things like face color correction. So you can brighten up his face over on this side, as you can see. You're not going to see it on this image because it's black and white, but you can also go and adjust these different channels individually. So, you know, you can create some cool effects with that. What else we have here? Another cool thing is eyes follow camera, which if you check that option, you're not going to see it on this image because he's looking straight to the camera. And basically what this does is making sure that his eyes are always looking into the camera as you move the camera itself. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. Uh, funny stuff like eye scale. So you can make his eyes bigger like that. Again, this is just one single slider and you don't need to touch anything else. So if you boost his eyes to something like this, you can just increase this a little bit, just like that. So his eyes are a little bit more open. 
it is still fully animated. Pretty good, isn't it? I'm going to show you other things here as well. You can change his uh, eyes color. Well, obviously, this is, this is a black and white picture, so you're not going to see as much. But we can just, you know, make them lighter like this. Or very, 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 very dark like this. And my favorite feature of them all is called makeup. Oh no, I should say second favorite feature because I'm going to show you my favorite feature in a bit. But my second favorite feature is eyes makeup. If you drag this slider, look what's going to happen. It will put makeup around his eyes. So we can create all sorts of things. For example, zombies. Zombies are pretty cool, I think. We can change the color as well. So this is slightly bluish. We can do slightly purple-ish, something like this. Just give it a second and you can see updated immediately. Let's just leave it as something like that. So this affects how strong that makeup will be. Uh, you can decrease it and it's going to be just around his eyes over there. Something like this. Okay, I'm just going to turn it off. And there are a couple of other things there as well. You can play with that. Uh, we are going into this button here. Oh, you know what? Before we do, uh, just go to this one and select hide move controller like that that's gonna just hide this controller so we don't see it anymore it's still there as you can see uh but at least we can see our animation better like this so back to color over there and if you are familiar with ios devices some phones from apple can create something that is called studio lighting or something like that uh, it's actually what we have here we call it relight relight is amazing because you can just drag the slider and look what's gonna happen it's completely gonna change the look of this photo into something like this it is just amazing you can create so so many things with this it is fully animated so it stays with that face uh, you can create really really creative effects with this so you can eliminate all the light and just focus on his face and there are a couple of other things you can do here you can expand that affected area now it's just gonna affect more of his face, expand that softness. So it's just gonna have a softer approach, something like that. So there are plenty of other things you can do with this. I'm just gonna drop it back to zero. And you can see the difference is massive. Like this is original and this is with Relight. Just like that, you don't need to touch anything else. You don't need to brush anything or anything like that. Everything is fully automated for you, fully animated as well. Okay, I'm gonna drop it back to zero and I'm just gonna show you other cool things here. For example, inside this animation, depth of field is very popular, obviously. As you increase it, it's gonna focus on his face and everything else will be blurred. You can also set how strong his face should be affected by this and so on and so on. But what's more important is that when you turn on depth of field over here, it also affects everything else that you have in that scene. So for example, if you have particles there, it's going to affect those particles as well. As you can see, it affected all of them. But for example, I would prefer if these particles were a little bit more sharper. So I'm just going to go to this button here, close. And just gonna scroll down and there it is. It's called blur offset, decrease it, something like this. And it's just gonna remove blur from those particles, just from those particles. It's not gonna touch anything else but those particles. Okay, I'm not gonna go into details too much. Just uh, one more little thing that I forgot to mention and you might find useful. It's called Boomerang. If you are familiar with Instagram, it works exactly the same. If you turn it on, your animation will go from, let me just turn off particle system for now and also that depth of field so it's a little bit faster like that and now we turn on that boomerang animation and what this is doing is basically from the beginning to the end of your animation is what you set up in your keyframes but after that your animation will play backwards as you can see it will go into that default position there we go and from there it will go into your specified position again and this happens in loop, so you can render out animations as long as you want. So now you might be wondering, like, well, fine, I have it here in After Effects in Photo Motion, but how am I going to get it out of here? We need to export this animation, right? And you do that by double-clicking on this Export button. You can do that immediately as you finish your required steps, but obviously you want to create some animation and you probably want to, you know, enhance it by these features over here. So we can just double click on this and immediately you can see a bunch of things here. So the first one is your main export area over here, but you can also export all the other resolutions or aspect ratios. So what this means basically is that your animation is ready, but you are not limited only to this portrait resolution as we 
select it over here. But you can always, always, always export different resolutions or different aspect ratios from that same animation. But well, anyway, I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna go and double click on this because we want to render out this resolution, portrait resolution. So double click on it. That's gonna open a new composition. So this is your animation. All you need to do is export this animation out. But before you do, let me just do this. And back to full resolution so you can see this area down here better. As you can see, we have something called Photo Motion Perfect Cut System. What this is doing is telling you where you should make your cut. Because if you render this animation as it is, it's gonna play, you know, from zero to one second, as we specified here. But obviously, it's gonna render out everything else after that one second. So it's not going to do anything, really. It's just going to waste your time. So what you want to do is tell After Effects where it should stop that render. And it should stop where our Perfect Cut system says it should stop. So this is actually calculating where is your last keyframe. It also works with loopable animations. Since we don't have that, it just shows one value here. So what we need to do is tell After Effects, hey, After Effects, stop at this specific frame and just render that. And you do that by going to this area here and as you can see, it also shows command click for blah, blah, blah. So we're going to command click and that will show you frames over there. We are on frame 197 and we want to be on frame 29. So single click on this and type 29, hit enter, and that would move your time head to frame 29. And also our perfect cut system will tell you, hey, listen, this is where you should make that cut. So what you need to do now is go over here and click on this and drag it over there. If you hold down shift, it's going to make your life so much easier because it's going to snap to that blue line just like that, you see? And you can just release and that's it. Alternatively, you can use shortcut on your keyboard and that shortcut is N, just like that. So now Photomotion knows it should only render everything between frame 0 and frame 29. But before we render it out, let me just give you some super, super cool thing that you can use in your animations. And it is hidden inside of our effects library. So double click on this and this gives you access to all of these things. So for example, if we want to add some light leaks, we just double click on this library. And if you scrub the timeline or play it like this, it's going to give you a preview of all of these light leaks that you can use in your final animation. It's all included in Photomotion. There are multiple pages as well. So if you drag this, go to page number two. Oh, that looks cool. That looks pretty nice. Oh yeah, this one looks really nice. So what we want to do is single click on this and copy it either by hitting Command C or going to Edit and Copy. And now we are going back to our render portrait and we just paste it here. You can move it. If you feel like it, you can do other things like, you know, you can switch direction of it up and down. So, you know, blue is going to be down and red is going to be on top. Now, you obviously, you won't be able to click on this button anymore because you need to move this below this layer. And if you do that, uh, that will, again, enable these buttons here. If you still can't click on it, just make sure you don't have this layer selected. So deselect it like this, and then you will be able to click on it again. And we can import other things, for example, from our typography library. You know, plenty of other things that you can do. For example, this one, and just go Control Copy and, and Control V. And as you can see, you can't see it because it's out of the frame. So we're just going to move it like this. And there you go. So now you have your animation, you have your light leak, and also on top of that, you have some text animated there. Or obviously you want to change that text and you do that by, again, move it down there and double click on this and you can change that text over here. So just double click and type whatever you want to. Then you can close this and you can render this out. I'm just gonna remove these two things because I don't like them there that much. What we're gonna do now is go to File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. If you are familiar with Adobe Media Encoder, uh, you can use that as well. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna stick with Render Queue. So click on Render Queue, and it will add it to this new tab called Render Queue. As you can see, it is here. Before I render it out, I just want to quickly show you one thing. If you go back to your render dashboard for portrait, you will see that now we can go to, let's say this one, if we want to render something out for Instagram story, for example, just double click on it 
Again, we need to set up that 29. So the 29, hit N on your keyboard, and that will make a cut there. You can use different sets of effects. It is not connected to your render portrait whatsoever. So what this allows you to do is to have different outputs for different purposes. So for example, Instagram story might look slightly different, might use the same animation, so you don't need to animate it again, but the final result might look slightly different. Let's say you want to put some text here or something like that. You can do it here. And again, you just send it to render queue by going file, export, and add to render queue. And that's going to put it below your uh, portrait render. I'm not going to render out this one, so I'm just going to delete it from there. And we're going to render out this animation. So just make sure you have your output path selected over there. So, yep, we're going to put it on our desktop, hit save, and you can choose your codec options over here if you click on that lossless word. Um, I really like, uh, for example, this GoPro Cineform, and that, and then hit OK. And now you are ready to render this out. You might be wondering, well, I don't want to see these buttons there. They're not going to be there, don't worry at all. Before you hit that render button, ideally you want to save this somewhere else, not into that original AEP file, because the next time you're going to open it up, it's going to have all your animation settings and all of that. So you want to go File, Save As, and save as something else like our first animation. Hit Enter, it's going to save your project. So what this allows you to do is to have access to that original AEP file that we opened when we started with this, but also to have access to your animation and always come back to it when you need to render out new things or whatever you want to do. So now we hit the render button and it's going to zip through this. It should be pretty fast. I'm running this on my MacBook and as you can see, we are almost done. All right, there you have it. I really hope you learned something useful today, and believe me, we just scratched the surface of all of the possibilities of portrait animation with this toolkit. I can't wait to see what you guys can come up with, so let us know in the comment section below. If you like it, hit the like button. If you love it and want to see more, hit subscribe, it would mean the world to me, and I'll see you in the next video.